Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be diving into the world of monitoring and the tool that we are going to look at is Grafana. Now, Grafana is your ultimate tool when it comes to monitoring and visualization. So in this particular session we will be looking at 15 interview questions that you can expect as part of your Grafana. Now, whether you are preparing for an interview or you're a seasoned pro or you're just starting your Grafana journey, stay tuned for valuable insights. Now, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. The first question I have is, what is Grafana and what is its primary use? So like I said, Grafana, that's your monitoring tool. So that's another open source uh, monitoring tool we have right so uh, we can use it for analytics and visualization of your data so you know any monitoring data that you want to visualize we can visualize that by making use of your um, uh, Grafana tool so we can mainly use this for monitoring and observability purpose so if you want to monitor your infrastructure or your applications and you want to observe how your infrastructure is behaving or your application is behaving we can uh, make use of your grafana for that so this tool it allows us to create and display dashboards so the dashboards is basically where we create the uh, visualization um, we can also use this to create charts and different different graphs from uh, data sources so uh, data sources can be your uh, prometheus will from where we can fetch the data and then we can visualize that data in uh, grafana um, we can also use this to monitor the system performance your metrics and various logs so overall grafana is your visualization tool which can be used to visualize your data from various data sources moving on to the next question explain the difference between grafana dashboards and grafana panels now dashboards that's your collection of panels so when we say panels they're like uh, you have created one visualization for cpu utilization one visualization for memory utilization we call that as your panels and this collection of panels we call it as your uh, dashboard so we can use this to um, uh, visualize your data by making use of your graphs and charts. We can also make use of your table and um, gauges to basically visualize the data. So this collection of your graphs or your tables, we call it as your dashboards. Now panels on the other hand, these are your individual components, individual graphs or individual tables, you call them as your um, uh, panels these are individual components within your dashboard and we can use this to visualize data from different data sources and also visualize different metrics so like cpu utilization discrete so discrete memory utilization all these are different metrics so each of these visualization we call them as your panels the next question we have is what are data sources in grafana and how do they work now Grafana is a visualization tool. Now to visualize that data, we need some, some kind of data, right? So this is where your data sources uh, comes in. So data sources are your external data repositories where the uh, visualization data would be available for us. So, you know, it can also be your external databases and this is where your metrics, your logs, your time series data are generally stored. So Grafana itself does not store all this data rather it uses another tool to fetch all those information for us. So Grafana supports a variety of data sources. So one of the popular data source tool we have is your Prometheus. Other than this, we also have your Graphite, we have InfluxDB, Elasticsearch, among other uh, data source tool that can be uh, used. But in general, uh, Grafana and Prometheus is one of the very widely used combination that we have. So Grafana will be used as your visualization tool and Prometheus will be used as your data source tool. So data sources are configured in Grafana and used to query and retrieve the data for visualization. So we'll be creating the connectivity in Grafana, like let's say Prometheus, and then uh, from Grafana, we'll be querying and retrieving all this data from the data source. The next question we have is explain the concept of Grafana plugins. Now Grafana, is also all about your plugin so these plugins they mainly help you to extend the functionality or integrations to grafana so if you want to let's say integrate 
uh, Prometheus or you want to integrate any other uh, data source tool, we make use of your plugins for that. So they allow you to customize and extend the Grafana's capabilities. It could be your data sources, it could be your panel types, your visualizations, your authentication methods and many more things. So all of these things uh, can be um, uh, used in Grafana in the form of plugins. So these plugins uh, are either developed by the Grafana community or you can also build your own custom uh, plugin based on your specific use case that you have. So based on the functionality that you want to add to your Grafana, you'll be making the plugins, making use of the plugins accordingly. The next question we have is how do you create a dashboard in Grafana? Now at any point, if you want to create your dashboard, there's a UI available. So you can navigate to this uh, option called create a menu. And then from there, you should be able to see the option called dashboard. You can use that option to create your uh, dashboards, specify your data source, and then uh, what type of panel you want to use. All those configurations can be done. So from there, you can add your panels, configure data sources, customize the layouts, appearance of your dashboards. All of these things can be done by making use of your built-in editor. And then once your dashboards has been created, you can save them, you can share the dashboards and also it can be exported for collaboration or for future reference, right? The next question we have is what is Grafana alerting and how does it work? Now, like any monitoring tool, Grafana also has the alerting mechanisms which can be used to trigger notifications based on the thresholds that you have defined and the conditions that you have defined. So these alerts can be configured to send notifications. So these can be your email notifications, it can be your Slack notifications, pager duty notifications and many more things. So like for example, let's say you're monitoring the CPU utilization and if the CPU utilization is above 90%, you want to uh, trigger a notification. Grafana has an option for that. So that's where we can make use of your Grafana alerting. So alerting rules are defined within Grafana dashboard or using Grafana's alerting rules engine. So you can either define this alerting mechanism within the dashboards, or you can also make use of the alerting rules engine to define your threshold as well as the condition when the notifications should be triggered. The next question we have is explain the difference between Grafana annotations and Grafana alerts. Now, Grafana annotations can be used to mark uh, something important all right so if you want to create a marker for any events we can make use of your annotations now it could be you know your specific events or your point in time events so when i say events it could be your deployments or any outages or any incidents if you want to highlight these things we can make use of your annotations alerts on the other hand is a notification all right so if something goes wrong trigger a notification so that the team responsible for um, that um, component will be notified and they can take some action. So these are your predefined conditions or certain thresholds that you have set. And these are mainly used for generating notifications whenever there's an anomaly or there's an issue that is detected by the system. So annotations are used to highlight specific events. Alerts are used to trigger notifications when something goes wrong. The next question we have is what are Grafana templates and how do you use them? So these Grafana templates are nothing but your variables that can be used to parameterize our queries, the panels and your dashboards. So they allow us to create dynamic um, and reusable dashboards. So these are like uh, templating that can be used to define a skeleton and then you can reuse them again and again and again to create reusable dashboards and these are mainly used for different different environments or data sets so let's say for example you have your uh, grafana tool to monitor your dev environment your qa your uat your fraud now instead of defining the dashboards again and again and again we can have a common template we can have a skeleton and then we can start using that to create the dashboards everywhere we want so templates can be defined at the dashboard level or you can also de define it globally across multiple dashboards. So we can um, either make it specific to one dashboard or we can make it globally so that we can, it can be used with multiple dashboards. The next question we have is how do you secure Grafana installation? Now, Grafana installations 
can be secured it provides us various methods so we have options like authentication and authorization we can make use of your encryption and access controls so who can access grafana uh, what they can access in grafana all those things can be controlled and this way we can secure our grafana so we have authentication methods such as LDAP authentication, OAuth, or any external identity providers, and we can use this to configure your authentication. So who can log in, uh, and accordingly can set the uh, permissions as well for them. We also have the RBAC, which is your role-based access control, which can be used to define your permissions and also restrict access to your specific resources. So you have lots of options that are available. So based on your use case, you can define the uh, authorization as well as your authentication to control um, who can access your Grafana and what they can do in Grafana. The next question we have is explain the role of Grafana plugins in extending its functionality. So like I already mentioned, uh, Grafana is all about your plugin. So any additional features or any additional visualizations that you want to add, then you will need to make use of your Grafana. Now, if there is something that it is beyond the capabilities of your Grafana, then you will be going with your plugins, which will give you that integration to do that additional, to add that additional feature or visualization. Now, these plugins can be installed and configured to add support for new data sources or new visualization types or authentication methods and more. So let's say you want to integrate with LDAP or OAuth or any external identity providers. We'll make use of your plugins for that. So global uh, Grafana plugins, these are either developed by the community or you can also build your own custom um, uh, plugins based on your use case. The next question we have is what is the purpose of Grafana Loki and how does it differ from other log aggregation solutions? So Grafana Loki is mainly a log aggregation tool which can be used to collect logs from all of your systems, mainly your cloud native environments. So this is optimized for horizontal scalability, cost effectiveness, and also easy integration with other observer observability tools. So unlike your traditional log aggregation solutions, Loki will store your logs in a highly compressed and horizontally scalable manner, making it suitable for high volume and distributed architectures. So when you have like huge amount of logs, uh, that you need to aggregate and then uh, push it to your Grafana. We can make use of your Grafana Loki, which also gives you horizontally scalable and you can mainly use it for your distributed architectures. The next question we have is how do you visualize metrics and logs together in Grafana? Now, Grafana, it allows us to visualize your metrics and logs. So like I said, Grafana is mainly a visualization tool, right? So um, we can use this to visualize your metrics as well as your logs. Now, how does it do that? It does so by integrating with data sources like Prometheus for your metrics and then Grafana Loki for your logs. So fetching the metrics can be done by making use of uh, uh, Prometheus and then uh, fetching the logs can be done by making use of your Grafana Loki right so users can uh, query both metrics and logs on the same dashboard right so we can visualize the both your metrics as well as your logs uh, on the same dashboard if you want you can also uh, correlate events across different data sources so if you're using multiple data sources like let's say prometheus grafana and then uh, grafana loki and then so on we can correlate events from different different data sources and also gain system-wide visibility into the behavior and also the performance of your system, okay? All those things can be done. So, uh, like I said, this is all about your uh, plugins, right? So based on that, you can get system-wide visibility. The next question we have is explain the concept of Grafana templating and how does it enhance the dashboard interactivity? So like I already mentioned, Grafana templating can be used if you want to create a skeleton. So if you want to create um, dynamic dashboards by just defining your variables, we can make use of your Grafana templating for that. 
So we can make use of your filters and parameters, queries, panels, visualizations, all of these things can be passed as uh, variables. So templatings, they mainly help us to enhance the dashboard interactivity. Now, how does it do that? By allowing the users to dynamically change the scope of your data. So you don't have to um, uh, modify the dashboard itself. You just have to uh, change the variables and that should uh, do the changes on the respective dashboards. We can also use it to analyze large data sets, explore large data sets. All those things can be done by making use of your templatings. The next question we have is what are the benefits of using Grafana for observability and monitoring? Now Grafana, it provides us with a unified platform which can be used both for your observability as well as your monitoring purpose. This also allows us to visualize our data, analyze our data and also set up alerts on your metrics or your logs as well as your telemetry data or any traces all right so its extensibility and flexibility and also a wide range of integration makes us a very popular choice when it comes to monitoring so grafana is one of the very popular tool uh, when it comes to uh, monitoring your infrastructure as well as your application and the logs of your applications right so this is this is mainly useful with your cloud native environments also very complex uh, distributed systems Grafana is a very popular choice when it comes to monitoring them. All right, so this uh, gives you um, more power and also integration with other tools via plugins, which can be used to like, for example, say Prometheus, which can be used to get all the metrics from your machines. And then uh, Grafana will start uh, helping you to visualize all those metrics on the Grafana platform itself. The next question we have is how do you scale Grafana deployments for high availability and performance? Now, Grafana deployments, they can be scaled for high availability and performance. How do we do that? We can do that by deploying multiple Grafana instances. So instead of running a single instance of Grafana, we can run multiple instances of um, Grafana. That will make sure that the Grafana instance is highly available and also the performance is uh, much better. We can also make use of shared storage for session persistence. We can make use of clustering and sharding techniques uh, we can also leverage your load balancing uh, uh, if you're if you're running grafana on multiple instances additionally grafana deployments can be optimized for performance by tuning any database settings enabling cache and your query optimizations so when we talk about making your grafana highly available we can definitely run grafana on multiple instances and then we can have them running behind a load balancer we can also make use of a shared storage across this Grafana. We can also think about using clustering as well as sharding techniques. And from the database side, we can tune the database settings. We can enable cache, uh, caching and also optimizing the queries that we're running on uh, the database. So that brings us to the top 15 interview questions um, that you can expect as part of your um, Grafana. I hope you found these insights helpful in your Grafana journey. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for more content. Share your thoughts or any specific topics that you would like me to cover in the comments section. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.